The South Florida Symphony Orchestra is definitely making an impact down here in the Keys. This was the manifest dream of conductor, musical director, and sixth generation conch, Sabrina Alfonso. She was joined in her vision by community leaders and townspeople who wanted to make this music accessible to our community down here. Now they are back in town this week with a performance entitled Epic Heroes and Their Goddesses. Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'm really excited to be here. Well, first it's time on yeah. your show. <laughs> well, it's wonderful having you here for the first time, and it sounds like you have a magical performance scheduled for this weekend. We do. It's at the Tennessee Williams. It will star Natasha Peremsky, and Natasha got her start as a pianist with the symphony when she was 17, and now she's 24, and she's become a worldwide sensation. She'll be performing the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto, and then the symphony will have other music with Sibelius and Davies Day. And uh, it's going to be a magical, magical evening filled with music. And uh, it's very stirring performances. So mm -hmm. when people come, they'll know why we're known as the Hip Symphony. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those places that you fall asleep. Right. You stay awake. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's good. And I know you also have some other things going on this week as well as the performance on Friday. Yes, tomorrow we are going to have the children's concert, which is called Symphony in the Schools. And it's a wonderful collaboration between the Florida Keys Council of Ar the Arts, mm -hmm. headed by Liz Young and her board of directors, uh, Arts Out Loud, which are two wonderful musicians who've been going into all the schools from Marathon to Key West. They'll be working with approximately 3,000 children during the course of the school year. Wow. And we've been able to elevate our regular children's concert series as opposed to the children sitting in on rehearsals now. This is an actual curriculum that meets FCAT standards. It incorporates music and history and science and art and reading and the children enter a time machine through the education process there's testing that's involved with it uh, it's just spectacular and then each section of the orchestra shows the children a little bit about what it takes to make music mm -hmm. and through the process they're transformed to for the first time see where music comes from because you know if we think about it children hear music when they're growing up mm -hmm. but they doesn't they excuse me they don't know that it comes from these specific instruments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really powerful and the children react in such a beautiful, beautiful way. This is so important then for the community to have down here because you're impacting these children and exposing them to something they wouldn't have. It's absolutely true. You know, I was recently at the um, Croissants de, de France on mm -hmm. um, Duval Street and two of the people who work there said that the field trip that they remember from when they were young was going to the symphony and from that they went on to play in the band here at the high school mm -hmm. and it was all because of their exposure. Wow. You know kids are uh, pretty amazing and very you know sometimes it just takes a moment to click for them when the band uh, someone from the music uh, department stood up in the uh, horn section and he said here's my instrument and here's the mouthpiece and he blew through the mouthpiece and it made a blat sound and all the kids giggled you know mm -hmm. and then he said and here's what it sounds like when it's attached to my instrument and this beautiful sound comes out of that mm -hmm. equipment and you just hear the kids go crazy and mm -hmm. then the host section plays something from Star Wars music or Little Mermaid and you hear this rumble mm -hmm. of the children finally figuring out that oh that's where music comes from mm -hmm. because they don't know about a violin so they show them the hairs on the bow and mm -hmm. the reeds used with the wind instruments and every single part is broken down for them mm -hmm. and they are just on cloud nine by mm -hmm. the time they walk out. It's mm -hmm. a great home run for everybody concerned. Absolutely. And now you have a lot planned too for the remaining season. Well, we have the Vienna Boys Choir coming mm -hmm. up on February 17th and it was a great honor to be asked to present the Vienna Boys Choir. Pre we're presenting them here on February 17th and actually also on the mainland February 16th. And um, it is part of our 15th anniversary celebration. Mm -hmm. And then the season will end in April with Zul Bailey returning. And uh, I know you know about Zul and mm -hmm. what a great guy he's been. He's been here since the beginning of the symphony. And uh, he is going to be doing the Elgar Cello Concerto. Mm -hmm. And then along with it, the symphony will perform the um, music of uh, Brahms and also Schubert as part of the uh, rest of the program. So it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. A great 
15th anniversary That's year, right. isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you again for being on this morning, and hopefully everybody can make their way out to the symphony this Friday night at Tennessee Williams Theater. We're going to leave our viewers right now with a clip of the South Florida Symphony Orchestra. I know you will enjoy it, and thank you everybody so much for tuning in this morning. You can catch me again tomorrow at 7 a.m. and back at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day. This is the greatest music ever written. You want to get it out there. You want people to hear it and love it. We usually did a lot of the Broadway shows, but we're over them. We're full-fledged symphony goers now. In their comments, they were comparing the experience to being in New York uh, or at a, at a major center of uh, culture. Part of our mission and vision is to really be a part of the community and enrich the community through the music that we provide and reach a diverse audience. Since the Florida Phil demise, there hasn't been that level of an orchestra, and we bring that level. We'll have the opportunity to get even better as the communities all come together and really the arts start coming together and have a foundation. The long-term goal is to have a core of musicians that are here with enough work so that this can be their home base and they travel elsewhere for the side work that they might pick up and grow each concert um, season by adding another footprint of four concerts. Every time we add a concert date, that helps us grow. Thank you.